Hello everyone, Kevin here, and I want to welcome you to this Gobbler's Roost Adventure. Now, in today's video, we're going to do a little uh, tribute to Fred Arbogast, the inventor of the jitterbug. Uh, as many of you know, I love and I collect jitterbugs. Oh, they're awesome fishing lures. When bass hit them, they just explode on them. They're, they're great lures. They've been around forever. Um, and Fred Arbogast uh, invented the jitterbug uh, way back in 1937. Um, getting close to 100 years for this, this bug. Um, and legend has it that he invented this thing. Uh, he whittled it out of a broom handle and put a spoon on the front. He was looking for a deep diving bait, and it didn't work. And he threw it in a drawer, and oh, a couple of years later, uh, in, in uh, 1937, he pulled it out of the drawer, and with a friend, he uh, started messing with it, and before you knew it, he had this awesome topwater bait that he made out of a broom, broom handle, and a spoon. And guess what? I just happen to have a broom handle and a spoon handy. So, uh, in a tribute to Fred Evergast, we're going to try and make a broom handle and spoon jitterbug. Now Fred, undoubtedly, when he started his lure, he, uh, he cut the broom handle off. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Actually, I have a old jitterbug body here, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. Fred didn't have this. Swiss Army knife out. And we'll get this thing whittled down. I think I got it pretty good right now. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up on the belt sander. So after a little bit of finishing work on the belt sander, uh, this is what I have so far. Oh, not perfect, but uh, sure looks good for homemade. Now we'll have to see if we can fit a spoon on the front. Now the one thing I notice about my spoons is they're too thick, they're too heavy. Now I don't know if uh, Fred Arbogast ground them down or not, or maybe he just used the spoon the way it was and cut it to shape if he desired, but oh, I'm going to go on this wheel here and try and take it down, try and thin it out a little bit. See what happens.
try it about like this at first and see what we get. I think I'll try and clean it up a little bit with some sandpaper. We got this spoon down to, oh, not quite as thin as the jitterbug. It's still a little heavy, but I think now I'm at the point I need to trace this jitterbug spoon. So I have it all traced out. Now I need to uh, drill it out. Okay, now it's time to shape it. getting there. Looks like a jitterbug spoon. Oh, now the next thing to do is to fit the two parts together. Kind an angle on that so that this all fits together. You can see right here. Got to grind an angle so the spoon can fit right on the front of it. I took it over to my belt sander and uh, Touched it up a little bit. It's kind of looking like a jitterbug right there. There we go. Okay, put the split ring on. Now we'll see if we can attach this thing. Okay, get this other one in. Dropped it on the floor. Oh. 
Well, not exactly perfect, but it's uh, looking a little bit like a jitterbug. I'm looking at it and it's, oh, maybe not exactly perfectly straight. It'll probably track to, looks like it'll track to the right. Because I don't have it perfectly straight, but for my first try, that's pretty good. And there you have it, folks. Broom handle and spoon jitterbug. Oh, we'll have to see if this thing catches some bass now. I can't wait to get out, of, out to the secret pond. Power a couple eyes on it. Give him some eyes. Look right there. Right there. Okay, just gave him some rudimentary eyes, and that's what he looks like. Good morning, everybody. Kevin here, and I want to welcome you back to this Gobbler's Roost adventure. Where was I? <laughs> I thought I had an audience there for a moment or two. But anyways, I want to welcome you back to this Gobbler's Roost Adventure. And in this Gobbler's Roost Adventure is Broom Handle and Spoon Jitterbug. I finally got it done, my Fred Abergast tribute, and we're back up at the secret pond, and we're going to start throwing this thing, see if maybe we can catch something. If you're interested, you're welcome to come along.
he had it and I missed him. Darn it. Oh. Yeah, look at that. He messed me up. I had him. Oh, that was another hit. Another hit and a miss. Got me all messed up. Was another hit. Got me all tangled up. Yeah, that was a hit. Tangled me all up. Nice one. Oh, right here. Come on. Oh, this is a nice bass. Oh, this is a very nice bass. Whoa. 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 <laughs> he was a big one. First hit of the day. On the broom handle and spoon jitterbug that I built. In honor of Fred Arbogast. Oh, he's got it all tangled. Settle down, buddy. He's all tangled up. Look at this guy. Oh, oh, oh. And a broom handle and spoon jitterbug. This guy is awesome. Right there. Get a measurement on him. Wow. He 
he's 18 inches. I gotta put him back. Broom handle and spoon jitterbug. That's one of the biggest bass I've ever caught. Oh, he's getting ready. There he goes. Well, there it was, everyone. Uh, broom handle and spoon jitterbug. Uh, it sure was a lot of fun doing this project in honor of Fred Arbogast. Um, he built, in 1937, he built the first jitterbug he whittled it out of a broom handle and put a spoon on the end and that's how the jitterbug came to be and this one sure did catch a dandy bass didn't it yeah that was a nice bass i had a lot of fun with it i was so excited i kept calling him him but obviously that was a big female and uh she fell prey to the broom handle and spoon jitterbug and that was just awesome i'm kevin and i hope you enjoyed this gobbler's roost adventure if you did please subscribe and please hit the like button